Adaptive cruise control is a fantastic feature on Volkswagen and Audi products when it works. However, when it fails and when things go wrong, it could get very frustrating and very expensive to fix. Luckily, one of the most common failures on mid-2010 Volkswagen products is free to fix, and in this video, I'm gonna give you the knowledge and skill so you could fix it yourself. Before I show you though, let us know down in the comments what vehicle you're having adaptive cruise control problems with. And now I'm gonna start to show you how I fixed the problems on my 2015 Volkswagen Touareg. Before we get into the exact fix, I wanna give a little bit of background on how an adaptive cruise control system works and let you guys know that this video should work for, again, mid 2010s, a little bit earlier, a little bit later, Volkswagen and Audi products. This will include Touregs, Passats, a bunch of Audi products, including the A6, A7, A8, and really any vehicle that uses a system like this that has some radar units, a camera unit, wires connecting them, and image processors. These vehicles use all of these components to get adaptive cruise control to work correctly, and there's one component that commonly fails, and it's a free and fairly easy fix once you have the knowledge. All of these components that I mentioned could fail and cause problems with your system, but most likely it is the camera unit as that is a very well documented known failure that is again easy to fix. So you don't just start throwing darts at a dartboard though, I'd recommend you do a little bit of diagnosis before you jump in and start doing a repair like this, and I'm going to show you how right now. The most basic form of diagnosis that you could do on this is realize that your adaptive cruise control isn't working and then look on the dash and see what warning lights are coming up. In my case, I had a light on that said ACC and front assist was not available and those assists were not coming up when I was driving the vehicle. This obviously lets you know that your system is not working, but it doesn't tell you exactly what is not working. To do a more advanced diagnosis on this, you'll want to use an OBD2 scanner. In my case, I used a VCDS, which is a very useful Volkswagen product specific scanner that gives you a very in-depth readout of problems with your vehicle. The exact fault codes that came up for me were C1107, video cable for image processing, signal failure, and C1108, function limitation due to missing video data. Both of these indicated that the car was not receiving data from the camera, which means it's either going to be the cable or the camera unit itself, which in most cases is more likely. So now that you know what the problem is with your vehicle, you'll begin to go ahead and fix your issue. Now you could replace the camera unit, but they're about 900 US dollars. And when I was looking, I could not find one in the US readily available. So I dove a little bit deeper and came up with this fix, which tends to do it. So there's an electronic chip within that camera unit that actually desolders itself from the electronics board and renders the camera useless. This means that the camera can't get data to the rest of the system in the car to use cruise control, which is why that fault comes up that there could be a faulty cable. All that you need for tools is a way to heat up that chip and get it to rebond to the board. I've seen some people use heat guns or hair dryers, but in my case, I bought a reflow soldering gun that I have linked below. This will give you the best chance of getting your board fixed and they're not very expensive, so I would highly recommend picking one up. It's basically a very precise heat gun that lets you get hotter than something like a hair dryer. You'll be seeing this very shortly in this video. But before we could fix that chip, we actually have to remove the camera unit from the vehicle and get to that chip. I'll show you how to do that, at least in a Touareg, right now. This might vary a little bit from vehicle to vehicle, but the general process is going to be the same. And if you search for removing your rear view mirror, oftentimes you'll also be able to access that camera unit. All right, so up here is your camera for adaptive cruise control and auto braking. In order to get to it, you need to remove your rear view mirror. To do that, there's this one clip here that sits like this. That sort of just pops down. You can see the tabs right there. Then you need to remove the mirror itself. As you can see, there's all of these tabs right there, and those grip onto this unit right here. And you need to turn it counterclockwise, and it'll pop out of place. After that, you can go ahead and pop this down. There again, you can sort of see the tab. So you're going to pop the bottom down and these will fall out of place. Sort of it'll pivot that way. And then you could actually access this unit. All right, so over here, you could see the cable that runs to this camera. This is pretty simple. There's just this clip over here. 
So I just did this with two hands. I pressed this clip with my right hand and grabbed here with my left and just pulled it straight out. And then you could see the connector there. There are four pins to it and four pins to there. Now there is a chance that this cable is the problem. However, there's also a chance there's a failed chip in here and I'll show you how to fix that. To remove this camera here, there's some tabs. So you'll press those in and while that's pressed in, you'll pull the camera backwards and it'll slide out of place. These tabs just slide forward into slots and these slide right there next to those tabs. And again, you can just pull that right backwards out of place and this is your camera. On the other side, there's this thing here with that push tab. You'll be able to unclip that and just remove your camera. Next thing we're gonna do is remove these four screws on the corners of this unit. These are T10 Torx. With that off, you have access to your board. We're gonna remove this ribbon here. So those two little plastic things there, you're gonna get behind and pop forward. That will unlock this ribbon. And then you could carefully remove it from that slot. I will note here that you don't have to remove that whole board from the aluminum housing of the camera unit. This is optional and I did it the first time that I took this apart to see if there was a connection problem there, but I generally don't think there will be. And it's another thing that you could break. So I might just do this within the aluminum housing and not disconnect that ribbon. All right, so now we got the board here. I made this heat shield to isolate it a little bit better, but I also bought a rework heat gun that's designed for this kind of work. So what we need to do is get that silver chip on the board up to between 215 and 245 degrees Celsius and get that thing above 183 degrees Celsius for approximately 20 to 60 seconds. I'm gonna go on the 60 second range just to make sure we get it. So there we are at 200. I started this process at the temperature that you're seeing here, but I ended up going up to 310 degrees for about three minutes to really make sure that that chip rebonded to the board. I would recommend slowly sneaking up on it, or if you're an electronics expert, let us know down below what temperature you would actually recommend. But 310 for three minutes is what ended up fixing this problem for good for me. There we are at 245, so we'll take the gun. And heat up our chip. And again, you might be able to do this with a hair dryer or a bigger heat gun, but I would highly recommend this heat gun because it works well. And again, it's linked down below. Once you got your chip all heated up, you'll want to let it cool back down to room temperature slowly. Don't go dunk this thing in water or anything, and you don't need to blow cool air on it. Just let it sit. Then go ahead and reinstall everything in reverse order of what you took apart. If it's cold, you might want to heat up your vehicle so the plastic tabs don't break when you snap stuff back together. You want to make sure your electronic connectors are straight and you don't force them. And other than that, it's basically the opposite of disassembly and I know you could do it. And then it is time for the moment of truth. You could go ahead and start up your vehicle and if this fix is going to fix your problem, it should do it immediately. If you start it up, your adaptive cruise control should be working without any issues and you shouldn't have any more warning lights on your dash. When I started this thing up and saw that the adaptive cruise control was working, I was so excited because again, this could be a very expensive issue to fix and doing something like this, although it seems a little bit hacked together, does fix the issue and it actually worked great for me and there's a good chance it'll work for you too. If for some reason this didn't fix your problem, you could do what I did, which is take it back apart and try it at a slightly higher temperature and see if that fixes it this way. But you don't wanna to go too hot that you damage the board and I personally don't know how hot that would be. Also, you could go ahead and scan your vehicle, see what fault codes keep coming up and maybe it is something different, but this is gonna be the most common. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like it, Comment down below if this fixed your vehicle, comment down below what vehicle you're working on, and subscribe for more so you don't miss any more helpful videos like this. Thank you for watching.